I converted a master of possession, but I'm having a hard time giving a reason as to why. It doesn't really fit either of the armies I'm building, and that uncertainty definitely dragged this project along. I guess it started when I bought the model off Facebook Marketplace. I don't quite remember the exact number I paid, but it was lotted up with some greater possessed, so it was a pretty good deal. I didn't feel like stripping the paint, so I left the Black Legion style paint job, and I'm actually thinking about using that color palette for the units that could fit into either my Corn or Nurgle armies. Let me know what you think of that idea, it's something I'm still thinking about. I removed the skull helmet to use on something later, and swapped in a Liber Demonica head that kind of had a witch doctor vibe I thought. I was heavy handed on the paint job and covered up the very shallow detail on the helmet, specifically around the mouth. And after repainting it a couple times to pretty much the exact same results, I tried to sculpt a vented mouth guard, kind of like a Grey Knight's helmet I guess. I ended up not liking that and also decided the top part of the helmet was a bit too cornate as opposed to neutrally aligned and removed it altogether. Can you tell I overthink things maybe a little bit too much? I ended up painting a helmet from the new Chosen kit and using that. I did this project on and off over quite a few months and my painting ability definitely leveled up during that time, so I'm actually pretty pleased with how this helmet turned out. I removed the skulls from the backpack as delicately as possible, but taking a chunk out of the circular chaos emblem was unavoidable. I'm replacing those skulls with the ghostly flaming skulls that I sourced from a Nighthaunt Lord Executioner. I did a bit of sculpting with Milliput to bridge the gap between the chaos symbol and the new skull and then moved on to the next part of the conversion. I wanted to further exaggerate the levitation effect of the model, so I built up the base with some layers of cork and construction sand. The Master of Possession model doesn't have a whole lot of real estate under the foot, which is the only anchor point that's glued to the base, so I ended up using paper clips kind of like staples drilling through the small connection point into the base and then creating a loop to hold the model in place and then covering up any exposed paper clip with some more basing material. The connection ended up being pretty sturdy. I guess maybe the main reason that I wanted to get a Master of Possession model is because I've seen so many cool kit bashes using Night Haunt Spirit Hosts as Warp Ghosts swirling around the model and it looked like a fun project, so I did just that. But I didn't really worry about following the assembly instructions. It's kind of a picky thing on my part, but I only chose Ghost with empty hands. These are basically just set dressing, so having them holding knives didn't really make any sense to me. Plus, if they could have Ghost knives, why not Ghost bolters or Ghost meltas, but I digress. I determined it would save a whole lot of work and headache if I painted the Ghost and the model separately and then glued the Ghost to the base. I struggled a bit trying to figure out how I wanted to paint the ghosts. I didn't want them to look exactly like the box art, hoping that it would help differentiate them from their Age of Sigmar origin, and I didn't want to paint them with a traditional fire paint scheme either. I landed on a mixture of pink and purple to mimic the look of where these spirits are supposed to come from, the warp. I wanted to make it look like the ghosts were made of swirling clouds of space dust, but it ended up looking like a splotchy mess. I have no footage of that, but trust me, it was not good. I ended up painting a gradient of pink to purple with a purple wash, and I think it turned out alright. I'll need to experiment with it a bit more, but I might incorporate this paint scheme into my possessed marines and any sorcerers or magic effects that I do in the future. This is one of those projects that got out of hand with overthinking and self-doubt. I can point out a bunch of things that I don't like about this guy, but from a distance, it's fine. And apart from maybe a comment or two, nobody would really notice. And that's most likely the case with all of my projects stuck in some form of partial completion, and there's a lot of them. I really want to improve with every project I do, not just with the finished physical product, but with the video as well, and then hopefully see the channel grow as a result. So when it doesn't feel like I'm doing that, everything comes to a screeching halt. I get wrapped up in working and forget to hit record or record things out of frame or out of focus, or I feel like what I'm doing just isn't any good. I end up spending more time video editing and voiceover writing trying to salvage a project than the time it took to finish the actual physical product. It's a constant process, but uh, I'm trying folks. I really appreciate you watching this video and I hope to get some of those problem projects figured out and released very soon. Thanks for sticking with me. Peace.